What's the creepiest or most unexplainable thing you've ever seen that you haven't shared anywhere? Back in 2016 my mother was staying at my place because my father was in the hospital at the time and my apartment was right next to the hospital one night I had this dream that the landline rings and my mother answers the phone and hears the news that my dad has passed away. She hangs up the phone and tells me that my uncle, a doctor at the hospital my father was in, just gave her the news of my father's passing. I wake up startled. I have a drink of water, and just as I start feeling relieved that this was all just a bad dream. The phone rings and my mom picks it up I was just watching her from a distance noticing the expression on her face noticing the tears that started dripping down her cheek, and she hangs up the phone and tells me that my uncle just told her that my father has passed away. This is the only unexplained thing that ever happened to me and this is the first time I share this with anybody edit, thank you everyone appreciate your kind words and condolences. As a kid I had weirdly specific dreams that became true as well but it was only about how and what candy I get on the day. I am sorry for your loss edit, okay, this got big. For those who thought that my dream influenced my choice in candy on the next day, the dream looked like this, I was sitting with my bro in our room, my mum comes home, telling us we get candy from the closet in the living room as usual. My brother and I run to the closet, I jump on the couch, my brother jumping from excitement next to me. Finally my mum came in with the key and gives us that one specific peanut candy. On the next day it happened as dreamed. I wondered all day long if I would get candy and if I get the peanut one. My mum never asked us what kind we wanted and I can't control that my brother stays on the ground. Some say it was a deja vu but they feel different for me I don't think so. Rescued a blue tick goon hound that had bad anxiety when we left so he had to be crated. Went to the grocery store with wife and two young kids and left the dog in the crate. When we got back, the dog was out of the crate, but the crate was completely closed and latched. There was no apparent way it could have happened. We problem solved it for the entire day and couldn't figure out how he did it. Called him Blue Dini after that. His unmatched escape skills continued though. He could open doors. No fence could hold him in, the dog simply climbed fences. We ended up rehoming him for his own safety. He actually wound up as a farm dog which I'm sure was his best home. I got recalled into work and was driving at about 3 a.m. I was in a very rural area in western Washington. As I come around a curve I see a woman in a nightgown on the side of the road looking up at a steep embankment. Just standing there staring away from the road. There are no homes nearby, not for miles. I call 911 and pull over about a minute up the road not knowing what to think. Deputy showed up couldn't locate anyone and was as dumbfounded as I was. Happened to me before on a dark back road to my house. There is no street lights, the road is very curvy, and it was about 2 a.m. She was standing on a bend in the road on the edge while the cliff behind her was about 100 to 200 feet drop. There are no homes for about 2 miles up the hill. I was driving very slow to make the turn so I got a good look with my headlights, I make it around the corner and look back, nothing. Creepiest thing ever. White older lady in a white nightgown just staring. My father died when I was 15. In my freshman year of college, me and my roommate in the dorms were somewhat close, but really had only been known each other for a month when the creepy thing happened. I hadn't told her much about my childhood, but she knew that my father had passed. One day she woke me up and asked me. Did your father used to call you, insert silly childhood nickname here? I hadn't heard that name since I was 6 or 7. I definitely never told her that he used to call me that, as it was a repressed memory that I hadn't thought about in a long time. Anyway, as it turned out, she had a dream that my father had come to her, and asked her to take care of me, calling me by this silly childhood nickname. It was always difficult for me that my father never saw me graduate high school or start college. But I guess he did, from wherever he is now. I was 10 years old riding my bicycle at dusk along the road I lived on which was parallel to a set of railroad tracks. I moved off the road as a car sped by and a beer bottle came sailing at me from the front passenger seat. I could see two young women turned around laughing at me through the back window. I flipped them off, and kept riding. About 30 seconds later, I heard the train slam into them. When I was about 11 or 12 I went with my friend and my younger brother to play football in a park that was in a pretty remote place so there were never many people. Basically three or four people came dressed in like Victorian style clothes, set up a box underneath a tree with big branches, 
tied a rope around it, one of them stood there with this noose around his neck and then his friend kicked the box so he was hanging. They took turns doing this, and we left. Was super weird thinking back to it and I have to check with my brother whenever I think about it to make sure it actually happened. Edit, for people asking how did they not die, they were taking turns etc. From what I remember, the box mustn't have been particularly high relative to the length of the rope, so there wasn't much of a drop if any. I don't remember how long they were swinging for but I suppose it must have been between 15 seconds to a minute. Then the friends would put the box back for the one hanging to stand on so they could get down, and someone else would take their place. My friend and I were sleeping in my parents' room one night when she was over and it was probably about 3 a.m. Suddenly we hear a sound like a fart from the corner of the room, and distinctly from this one corner. So I ask my friend if she farted, and of course she says no as it clearly came from that corner. Thinking maybe it's my dogs as they sometimes sleep in my parents' room, I go and check it out but realize they're not in the room with us. Okay, so that's weird I thought, and my friend also said she heard a distinct fart too so we assumed that maybe we both misheard. Then all of a sudden an unknown caller starts ringing my phone and I don't answer because at this point I'm freaked the fuck out. After I decline the call I receive a message from an unknown caller with the same area code as the caller who had just called me. The text message is all in Spanish and me and my friend decide to paste the text into Google Translate where it proceeds to say did you hear that fart? Needless to say we never slept in my parents room again, and we're convinced that we have a Spanish farting ghost in our presence. Edit, no brothers that would have pranked me either. I have a sister but she was as amused as I was when I told her. Freaky shit. In my mother's house, the basement light would turn on while we were away, and even if it was turned off before we left it was somehow back on when we got back. Once I went downstairs and was like hey Mr. Ghostman this is not good for the bills could you please chill it with the lights yes I know it's dark down here okay thanks lights stayed off. Edit, holy Christ more than two people upvoted me what also. No I have not seen Parasite she lives in a small town home and the basement is small, bare, and open. If someone could hide in there I'd be extremely impressed given the complete lack of hiding spaces. When I get the chance I'll give her a nightlight for Mr. Ghost when I see her. It's what he deserves. Also, if we did have a squatter, that person wouldn't be able to hid very long. My dog and two cats live there, all of which are very alert to strangers, smell or looks, especially the dog. My dorm hall had some weird shit happen, but one of the weirdest was that I went to the bathroom to wash my face and brush my teeth. The sink was right next to the entrance and as I washed my face, I saw and heard the door open and noticed a figure move to the end of the stalls. I figured a girl had just come in to use the bathroom. I dry off my face and begin brushing my teeth but realized I didn't hear anyone else. I checked each stall and no one was in there. I quickly grabbed my stuff and noped out. Something similar happened to me at my old university. This dorm was always known as the haunted dorm but it was quiet for the most part and I really enjoyed living there. Creepy things would occasionally happen there, like sometimes before bed I'd feel like I was being watched, but it was never intensely scary. Then one day I'm in the shower, and it's a community bathroom so anyone can come in at any time, and I hear someone open the bathroom door, set something down, and all the while they're humming some song. It's actually kind of pleasant and I planned on complimenting them when I got out of the shower, but as soon as I get out, the humming stops and there's no one there. I go out in the hall, and there's no one out there either. I go back in the bathroom, and quickly realize there was no one ever in that bathroom with me to begin with. I told someone else about it who lived in the building with me, but she didn't believe me so I never really spoke about it again. I was working in a retail store in a pretty sketchy area. There was this lady who was obviously a heavy drug user or ex-drug user. She must have been in her 50s or 60s. She was notorious on my block for being a crazy, but she'd visit me all the time and told me she thought I was cute. It was really bizarre cause she looked like a crackhead, but she'd act like a teenage girl around me. I tried to be nice to her cause she was known for being volatile. Anyway, on Christmas Eve she packed an entire Christmas dinner which she told me was all home cooked Guyanese food and a cologne set. As she was leaving she just squats down on the floor and throws her hand up and starts cackling. Yes, cackling which faded to a giggle. Never saw her again. Edit, yes, I ate it, and I enjoyed it. 
confirmed with some Guyanese Redditors, main dish was definitely Pepper Pot second edit, so a lot of you seem really surprised I ate the food. Some describing it as insanity. Some as a mark of true bravery. Let me be very clear, the point of the post wasn't even about me eating the food. I'd basically take free food from a stranger any given day of the week. From the moment she handed me the food, I knew I was going to eat it. Neither the prior knowledge of her being a druggie nor any action she would take after handing me the food was going to change this. It's been almost 10 years and I still don't have anything that's somewhat close to an explanation what happened then my bestie and me were sleeping over at her grandma's house and enjoying the newly renovated attic as it was supposed to become her little teenager apartment. All new furniture with a huge comfy couch and nice clean boards screwed to the wall all in white pink. Sleepover went just like you would imagine it with two 15-year girls painting nails watching DVDs and talking about the hottest gossip at school. It was already like 3 a.m. when we decided to go get some sleep and left the room to sleep in the bed next door. Only a few minutes later we heard a little scratching sound followed by a loud bang clearly coming from the room we just left. One of the boards that were screwed to the wall was lying on the floor. Almost 4 meters away from where it was supposed to be. Not like screw broke and it fell. Nope. Solid 4 meters away from that wall. Almost 2 centimeters deep hole in the ground where the board was laying. The holes in the wall looked like something grabbed that board and pulled it straight out ripping the wooden concrete it was drilled to. Still getting goosebumps remembering it I had something similar. My mother and I were in my room because she had to use the computer that I was on when we heard a bang come from the kitchen. I went to look and the clock that's normally on the wall was on the floor, leaning against the leg of a chair, maybe 7 feet from the wall. I figured it must have just fallen off the screw. No, because directly beneath it is a coat rack, followed by a shoe rack. It would have fallen, bounced off the coat rack, and flopped either on or behind the shoe rack. That's not what it did. The path from where it hung to the chair was an arc that completely bypassed the coat rack. Not to mention that it had been several months since daylight savings time, so it wasn't touched any time recently. A few months later, I found the clock on the kitchen table with pieces of glass missing. I asked my parents about it and they said that they came home to it on the floor, broken, but they cleaned it up. The second time may or may not be the same thing, but I can't say for certain because I'm not the one who initially found it. Nonetheless, I couldn't figure a valid way that the thing could have not just fallen, but actually launched itself away from the wall. Here is a creepy weird story. During a road trip from NJ to North Carolina, my friend and I decided we were hungry and went looking for food in a town in Maryland. I don't remember the name of the town, but it felt very strange as soon as we pulled onto the main road, as there didn't seem to be any people out and about. It was the middle of the day, but no one was walking around. There weren't any restaurant food options other than a pizza place, so we pulled up and parked in front of the pizza place. It seemed like everyone in the town must have gone to that pizza place. When we parked the car, everyone in the restaurant turned and looked at our car through the big glass windows. Like, at the same time. They stared at us, we stared at them. It felt so weird that I said, I don't want to go in there. My friend just nodded at me wide-eyed, and we drove to another town for lunch. Why was seemingly the whole town in that pizza place? What was with the staring? I'm almost a little sorry we didn't go in to find out, but at the same time not sorry at all. I just wanted to do a quick edit because I want to answer everyone's questions, as much as I would like to address them individually, I don't think I will be able. I wish I knew the name of the town. I think I never actually knew it. This story takes place 20 years ago. Google wasn't a thing, I think I had a beeper. I was new to driving, so using a paper map my equally young and unexperienced in travel friend and I drove through the western part of Maryland to avoid major cities en route to Asheville, North Carolina. After reading everyone's comments, I agree we probably stumbled on a small town party or an very busy lunch hour. It just felt so scary to us at the time. I agree it seems Lovecraftian Stephen King-esque. I also hope we weren't going to be on the next day's menu. No, we were two 16 to 17 year old white girls with dark brown hair. This was midday, I was driving, no headlights. I hope this answers everyone's questions. I'm going to go enjoy Friday night as best as I can, with some Moscow mules, and hope everyone is staying safe.
A number of years ago, I was using an online chat site and got talking to a woman who claimed to live around 50 miles from me. We chatted quite happily for a couple of days, then on the third day a Saturday night she was online and we were chatting, but she seemed different somehow. Something just didn't seem right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. She explained that she was drinking and I assumed that this was the reason behind the melancholy. We continued chatting and she put on a cam so I could see her there drinking as we chatted. Over a couple hours of chatting her mood appeared to grow darker and she appeared distressed but was hesitant to elaborate further. She left and returned around 30 minutes later and appeared drunker and more distressed. This time she had a stack of tablets on the table in front of her. She claimed that she couldn't go on and started to take tablet after tablet. I had no idea what this medication was. She was continuing to take more and more tablets and her speech was getting more and more slurred. I was suddenly in a terrible position. Was I seeing someone take their own life on a live stream and totally unable to do anything? All I had was a name and a town, both of which could be false. I made the excuse of needing that oil at and left the room, and took this opportunity to call my local police and explain the situation. The police took what details I knew and I was told to go back and try and keep her talking and try and get further details from her. They sent a plain clothed officer to my house and whilst I was chatting to her he pulled up the chat logs and history on his laptop. By this time her speech was becoming more and more incoherent and the cam was knocked so was impossible to see her. Soon the connection was lost. Was this real? Was it fake I had no idea of knowing. The police officer was during this time on the phone with the station giving them what information he had been able to obtain, he then left leaving me to contemplate. The next evening I got a call from the local police station, who wanted to thank me. The police had managed to trace her through her IP address and had been able to attend. It apparently was a genuine suicide attempt and she had been taken to hospital and was subsequently undergoing treatment. I never make it in time to answer these and have pretty much kept this story to myself. I remember telling one person who told me don't repeat that, don't mess with whatever that was so I didn't. I guess read at your own risk. When I was 10 I went with my parents to this campground so they could visit their friends. They had a son who I got along with, same age. Sometimes however if there was other kids around the son would try and pick on me to impress them. Me and the son went fishing and right as we're about to leave another kid comes and joins us and the son immediately starts picking on me. Not wanting to be stuck on a boat and teased I decided to leave and walk back to the campground by myself. I didn't want to go straight back to my parents because they'd ask why I wasn't with the son, and I didn't want to get into it. So I just walked on this U-shaped road. In the center of the U are campers and on the other side is woods with a lake around it. At the very center of the U is a park. Perfect I think I'll just sit on the swings until I think enough time has passed to go back. As I'm on the swings I notice a path directly across from me. I get up and start walking along this dirt path. There are reeds on either side of me and I have my hands stretched out as I walk dead center of this path. My hands can just barely touch these reeds unless I move closer to one side. I walk for about 10 minutes maybe and I get to this pond. Crystal clear water and I have this urge to drink it. It looks so refreshing. I kneel down and suddenly the hairs on the back of my neck go straight up. It was like I snapped back into myself. What am I doing? Why am I about to drink pond water? Why did I walk down this path? I start feeling really uneasy so I turn around and start walking the same way I came. Let me clarify. There was only one path. Straight. I made no turns, I didn't walk around this pond. I simply walked to the end of the path got freaked out about something and turned around. Suddenly all types of bugs were now around. I kept walking and I notice the dirt path is getting more and more narrow. The reeds and tall grass are now at my arms and there's a constant buzzing feeling in my ears from these bugs. The path gets so narrow that I have to walk sideways to avoid the reeds. I yell out help and I hear a voice ask if I'm okay. I reply I'm lost and a woman says just walk straight honey I see you. I see nothing it's just tall grass and reeds. I walk a few feet and see the road. I am scratched from head to toe and there's a woman by the playground asking what happened. She takes a Kleenex out of her pocketbook and starts wiping some of the scratches and I tell her what happened. I look behind me and see no path. I'm at the same park dot I'm in front of the swing I was just on. The woman looks at me and tells me that I shouldn't even think about it and to just forget it happened because I'm fine now. But she really emphasized not to talk about it. 
I've always been on the fence about it. I'm sure there was one path in and one path out. The bugs could have steered me off course. Maybe me being paranoid? Or, something more sinister that nearly trapped me for good. When I was five, me and my identical twin sister both caught scarlet fever. We are from America, but my dad's project had temporarily relocated us to India, and we were not used to the water and food there. We both fell into a coma towards the end of the fever. One day I woke up to my mom and aunt screaming and crying and holding my sister because she was unresponsive and not breathing. They were doing chest compressions, CPR, etc. but nothing was working. I was desperately trying to get their attention because I was young and didn't understand what was going on. I went back in my room to go back to sleep, but in the corner of the room where my sister's bed was, I saw her laying there, breathing fine. I went back out to the living room and realized I was looking at myself in my mom's arms as she tried to revive me. Eventually, I saw my eyes flicker open, and then everything went dark. I woke up a few weeks later in the hospital next to my sister and mom, who ended up catching it because of us, my mom told me I had almost died and they were trying to wake me up but I was unresponsive, so the ambulance took all three of us into the ICU. To this day, I am still unsure how am I witnessed my almost death. I might have an answer for you. I had something similar, to a much lesser extent, when I was a kid. I wrecked my bike at my grandparents' house by flying off their seven feet tall retaining wall to the underground garage. The way I remember it, I had an out-of-body experience where I was watching myself from above, soaring through the air and then popped back into my body right as I hit the ground. I was knocked out, had no sense of myself or anything, but I could hear everything going on around me. I could hear the neighborhood kids yelling to go get my grandparents and eventually them getting their own parents to come help me. Anyways I come to, and I'm completely okay thanks to my helmet. The helmet on the other hand was shredded to shit. Jump to a few years ago dot I'm listening to NPR and there is a program called Radio Lab bearing a story about out of body experiences that fighter pilots used to experience. I've left a link below to the story for you or anyone else who wants to hear it. My father was my grandmother's favorite child out of six, partially because he was by far the youngest out of ten children. She nicknamed him Little Mountain, as the last character in his Chinese name was, or Mountain. I remember going to her funeral when she passed, and we were burning paper money for her to use in the afterlife a Taiwanese Chinese tradition. I vividly remember watching my dad picking up a scrap of half-burnt money and making a sort of strangled noise. It was burnt in such a way that it resembled the character, even down to the middle prong being longer than the other two. I'm seriously not religious, or superstitious, but that was probably the closest I ever got to believing in the supernatural, or at least ghosts. I work as an adult novelty store manager with a theater so please envision the kind of customers I get. I had this regular who was nice enough and we always exchanged pleasantries and small talk. One day we said goodbye and as he went to leave he stopped dead in his tracks and came back to the counter. He told me that he ignores it every time but today it wouldn't let him. So naturally I ask what the hell is he talking about. He proceeds to tell me that there is an older black man who is with me 24-7. He sees him every time I'm in the store. The older black man just stands next to me watching me and smiling. At that point a chill ran up my spine because no one in that store knows besides my boss that I'm half black and my 65 year old black father that I was so close to past in 2014. I said the usual wow and oh my god so I wouldn't give anything away to see what else he says to see if it's legit. The customer proceeds to tell me that the man, my father, is sad about about his kids not doing what he's asked them to do and one particular child I has greatly disappointed him. The man, my father, also wants the customer to tell me how much he loves his wife even though she's married again. At this point I have tears in my eyes because how would this man know there's conflict between me and my siblings because of my dad's death? How would this man know my mother is married again? He kept mentioning that he could feel a strong religious pull with my father. My father was a preacher. He told me a bunch of other things and asked if I was pregnant. I told him no but apparently my next child will have my father's soul according to him. My two-year-old son looks like my father and loves his favorite songs. I have never seen that man again. When my daughter was very young, three to four, we were on a family vacation in a state park lodge. Our room had exposed wood ceiling beams to match the decor, important later. 
It was supposed to be nap time for my daughter but she was quietly playing by herself and just chatting away and the wife and I were reading on the other bed. Out of the blue my daughter turns to me and asks for a piece of rope. I asked why she needed the rope and she nonchalantly replies it is for my friend, the purple girl on the ceiling. My wife asks what friend? And my daughter responds I've been talking with the little purple girl hanging from that wood up there she asked me for another piece of rope. Needless to say that nap time was over and we quickly exited the room. I laid down to sleep one night. It always took me forever to fall asleep, as I'd have to breathe deeply for an hour to relax enough to drop off. A few minutes after I got into bed, the door to my room flew open with a bang. I heard something quite large and noisy stomp around the open area of my room, even felt a breeze that ruffled my hair, and then my door slammed shut and all was quiet. I was paralyzed with fear for a long time. Never got up to investigate due to sheer terror. No one else was home. Edited to add, sleep paralysis is a really good suggestion as to why this happened. But I don't think it was. First, I had only been in bed a few minutes, and since it always took me a very long time and effort to get to sleep, I am absolutely sure I had not slept. Second, I had sleep paralysis for about 10 years, but had trained my body to no longer have it. My method was to never sleep on my back and never take naps. Once my sleep schedule got regular and could sleep on my side, I rarely had sleep paralysis. But if I did have it on occasion, I used my mad zen skills to calm myself and my breathing down and go to my happy place. Once it was no longer scary, I never had it again, and I haven't had it in about 20 years at this point. Well, I think I may have shared this once before, but I was driving with someone through a very odd, small town in Arizona. As soon as we entered the city limits, I felt this extreme heaviness. Very surreal, dark, almost like a shroud of evil. As soon as we exited the limits, we both, not having spoken in a few minutes, said, did you feel that? We both did. It was really weird. About a month later, I was reading Time magazine, I think it was Time, and there was an article about that town and how it is so well known for cult-like polygamy and child marriage, etc. that explained a lot. So many memories, do you remember these moments way back in the time? Trapped at the back of my mind, I am so happy to grind, I am so happy to find So much experience now that I'm passing the lines, now that I'm grasping the signs I have been laughing a lot, got nothing to hide, no I got nothing to hide Bitch I am stuck left behind, I need a drive, yeah I need something to write Fill my own bank account, shit that I'm making, now putting it off to the side Feeling the vibe, got this new sorrowful happiness that I just can't seem to guide